Despite its reputation as a blood sport, professional mixed martial arts, MMA, fights rarely result in the death of athletes compared to boxing. Contrary to brutal stereotypes, throughout the history of this combat sport, significantly fewer fighters have died in the cage than in boxing. In the same period, from 1998 to 2013, professional boxing claimed the lives of 71 athletes, whereas the number of fatalities in MMA was considerably lower. Douglas Dedge, March 16, 1998 Douglas Dedge was the first officially documented case of a fighter's death in MMA. However, experts often overlook this bout because it took place unofficially and was not sanctioned by any existing organizations. The fight occurred in an underground arena in Kiev, where 31-year-old Dej faced Ukrainian fighter Yevgeny Zolotarev. Zolotarev knocked the American down in the first round, and as Keith Mitchell wrote in his article, Fatal Fight, the crowd immediately began chanting, Kill the Yank. Zolotarev delivered 14 targeted strikes to the fallen opponent's head until Dej raised his hand, signaling surrender. Douglas Dej was taken to the hospital and passed away two days later. The official cause of his death was listed as long-standing head trauma. Sam Vasquez, October 20, 2007 Lightweight Sam Vasquez fought Vince Lombardi at an official tournament in Houston, Texas. The 35-year-old fighter was knocked down in the third round and did not regain consciousness until he was transported to the nearest clinic. Vasquez was diagnosed with a subdural hematoma, and part of his skull had to be removed to alleviate the hematoma. The surgery lasted several hours, but Vasquez fell into a coma for two days and died on October 30, never regaining consciousness. The vasquez Labardi fight became the first sanctioned MMA bout to claim the life of a professional fighter. Michael Kirkham, June 26, 2010 31-year-old Michael Kirkham fought Carlos Iraburo at a tournament in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Iraburo knocked Kirkham down and delivered a series of powerful blows to the American's head. The referee stopped the fight, and a few seconds later, Kirkham lost consciousness. The athlete passed away two days after the fight. Dr. Joe Estwanek, who conducted the autopsy, determined the cause of death to be subarachnoid hemorrhage. Estwanek speculated that Kirkham's death might have been a result of a previous fight, in the amateur division, he lost due to a brutal knockout. Tyrone Mims, August 11, 2012 Middleweight Tyrone Mims was participating in his second fight, having lost the first, against Blake Poor at the Conflict MMA, fight night at the Point Six tournament. The fight was stopped in the second round when Mims himself signaled to the referee that he couldn't continue due to feeling unwell. Later, Mims refused medical examination, stating that he was simply tired. However, in the locker room, the fighter lost consciousness and was immediately taken to the hospital. He passed away the following morning, and the autopsy revealed no critical injuries. Additionally, there were no traces of alcohol or drugs in Mims' system. The official cause of his death remains undetermined. Pablo Elachukwu, April 7, 2013 Pablo Elachukwu, real name Felix Nchikwo, a fighter from Ontario, stepped into the ring during a tournament in Port Huron, Michigan. In the third round, the referee stopped the fight after Elachukwu dropped his hands and became unable to defend himself. The fighter remained conscious and spoke of suddenly feeling extreme fatigue. According to unconfirmed reports, Ella Chukwu had low blood sugar, so he was given orange juice to stabilize his glucose levels even before being taken to the hospital. Ella Chukwu experienced multiple episodes of unconsciousness in the hospital and suddenly ceased showing signs of life. The autopsy couldn't determine the true cause of the fighter's death, but this incident marked a turning point in the history of professional MMA. Tom Wright, the director of UFC Canada, initiated a thorough investigation and implemented measures to tighten technical rules for tournaments. These measures included mandatory comprehensive medical diagnostics for fighters before they were cleared to compete, as well as the presence of medical teams near the ring. Jeffrey Doyle, 
Jeffrey Doyle was an Irish MMA fighter who participated in the Ring's World Title Series tournament in Japan on October 28, 1998. During the match, he sustained serious injuries and died in the ring. Details about the exact circumstances of his death are not always available. Samit Singh Samit Singh was an Indian MMA fighter who competed in the Super Fight League tournament in India on April 28, 2012. After the fight, he suffered a heart attack that led to his death. Samit Singh did not receive any serious visible injuries during the bout, but his heart attack was fatal. Joao Carvalho Joao Carvalho was a Portuguese MMA fighter who participated in the Total Extreme Fighting Tournament in Ireland on April 9, 2016. He sustained serious head injuries during the fight, and his condition rapidly deteriorated after the match. He was taken to the hospital, where he later died from the injuries he suffered. Ivan Grimo, Ivan Grimo was a French MMA fighter who participated in the Phoenix Fighting Championship Tournament in France on March 3, 2019. After the fight, he experienced a heart attack that caused his death. Ivan Grimo received medical assistance, but despite that, he passed away. Some sources add the name of 26-year-old Leandro Souza to this list. However, Souza did not die in the ring but before the weigh-in when he spent the entire night in the gym trying to cut weight. Doctors concluded that he had suffered a stroke. However, considering Souza's age, many still disagree with this conclusion. In all of these cases, the deaths of the fighters in the ring were tragic and unexpected events. These incidents emphasize the importance of medical support and safety in sports, leading to ongoing discussions and improvements in rules and procedures to minimize risks for fighters and ensure their safety. In conclusion, it is worth noting that an official study conducted by Johns Hopkins University confirmed that within the framework of MMA tournaments held under MMA rules, the risk of a fighter dying in the ring is significantly lower than in any other combat sport where striking techniques are allowed. In MMA, fighters can utilize submission holds, which reduces the likelihood of receiving head trauma or critical internal organ damage from strikes.